Katrina, welcome to Green Room Central Studios. I'm so thrilled that you're here today. Say hello to Lynchpin Nation. Hey, Lynchpin, how are you guys doing? Thanks for having me, Sarah. I'm excited. We had a, a mutual uh, acquaintance and friend introduce us, and so we're just getting to meet for the first time uh, during this interview. And I want to start by asking, what is your superpower as it relates to events? I'm really, really good at creating the energy mm. that needs to be in a, either a safe space or a learning space or a sharing space or a um, inspiring people space. I think that is my superpower. I make people feel comfortable. And even on day three, they are still there. They don't drop off. You know, that's like the biggest thing is people come in the beginning and then they drop off sometimes. So they stick around. Yeah. That's so important, especially yeah. for events where we're making offers. Like we need butts and seats when the offer's right? made. And if they're not sitting there, they're not still engaged. If they're not still in the room, then uh, that definitely affects conversion rates. <laughs> yeah. Engaging is tough. I mean, it's one of the, getting them to the event in the first place is the hardest part. I would say I'm much better in the room than doing that part, but you know, I try new creative things every day. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It's there. I, I like to say that we're selling every step of the way. We're selling them on taking even a look at the fact that there's an event and there's a sales page. We're selling them on signing up. We're selling them on showing up. We're se yes. selling them on staying like, engaged during the event. So, Let's talk about your specialty, which is that energy piece, because I think it's huge. We, our guests will, will rise and fall to the level of energy that we bring to the room. And whether that's virtual or in person, the, the same holds true that people mirror and energy is so important. So what are, what are some tricks that you've got up your sleeve to helping manage the energy in the room first off i have to really have a great agenda and outline so i have to be i have to be connected to that content piece and how i'm going to flow people through the event that's first off because that's what brings me confidence and when i have more confidence then i can have more energy and the right energy mm -hmm. instead of nervous energy am i going to do the right thing am i going to bring this stuff so in the beginning when i used to do events i used to put way too much content in the events like that's probably the biggest mistake most entrepreneurs make is they're teaching too much. There's too much, right? Yes. And so I've constantly been pulling stuff out of my presentations. I'm a giver. I can't help it, you know, but but they can't take it. They're like, you're a fire host, Katrina, right? This is great. Mm -hmm. I'll see you in six months when I finally consume all this information. So I think it's, you, it's knowing that flow of content versus exercise and engagement so they're constantly feeling a part of it, whether you're in person or virtual. And then <clears throat> I'm very good, I, the laser coaching side of it all. So depending on what kind of event you're doing, I like to see my people. Some people, especially online, a lot of people will do events where it's just you presenting and you can't see the attendees. It's not my favorite way to do it. Agreed. I like to be able to see people. Yes. And so that way I can say, hey, Sarah, are you there? You know, I don't see you on video. Is there a way you could come out? We want to play with you. We want to ask you some questions, right? So I can encourage people to come out. So good. I can also say, hey, I see you shaking your head, you know, Kristen. Uh, I'd love to know what you're thinking. And so it's that kind of engagement and that brings the energy, I think. It makes people feel comfortable, like they want to stick around, and like they're really a part of the event. Those are some big things. So you talked mm -hmm. about two things. One was a balance between content and kind of taking breaks for workshopping and Q&A mm -hmm. and such. And then you talk about those like moments just that are like, what is it? what's the word? Interstitial moments where you're just like in the middle of something. You're just kind of calling people out to reel them back in, like yeah. to get them to turn on their video or to, to acknowledge that they're shaking their head or some, or right. feverishly writing things down. I love that. Mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. go 
let's go to the first one and dive a little deeper on that about knowing the flow and the balance between uh, and forgive me, I forgot the words you used between content and workshopping Q and A. What, what did you call that? Laser coaching? Yeah. Maybe? Yeah. Um, I like my presentations to, I'm not so rigid mm -hmm. that I have a presentation. I have to do these 20 slides during this 30 minute mm -hmm. period. I'm not like that. Some people are. And if that's what you need, that's what you need. I would rather go with the flow mm -hmm. Um, because people don't know what you didn't show them, right? So if you don't get to a few slides, nobody knows. Yes. You don't say, uh, well, I have 15 more slides. I have to hurry up and show them to you. No, if people are complete and or you're good and the message is landing, then stop and don't even mention it, right? That's, I think, another mistake people make is they um, admit to things that are going wrong when they're really not going wrong and that's not the perception, right? So there's that, um, but in confidence with your content. So the way that I do my content, I was taught by a coach a long, long time ago and usually I do three day events and I actually have one of them right here that you guys will laugh really hard. Like this is my three day event outline. <laughs> Okay, the piece of paper that you're holding up has like a million words on it. I know. And a lot of pretty colors. But it, but it makes sense to me. Yeah. Okay, so we do it. You got to do it however it makes sense to you. But they're all, if you see it, they're chunked out. So these are three full days. So the middle, this is the lunch break. There's four sections on each day, right? And so I know that those four sections are 75 to 90 minutes, give or take, mm -hmm. right? And that's your traditional event that you're gonna do a three-day event. So I have to know first, where am I doing my offer? Where am I making my offer? So yes. that's usually on day two in the afternoon. Then where am I following up with my offer? Morning of day three. Yes. Where's the most important part of the event? It's the first half an hour or 90 minute section on day one. Okay, so those three are non-negotiable. I don't move anybody, I don't put speakers there, I don't do anything, but really those are the things that I plan the other content has to fit in the middle, right? And I have to intermix exercises. So usually I have two colors on here and like one is exercises and one is um, highlights of things. So I know if I put three types of marketing, the, the words that are in this, I know what that means. I know what piece of content I need to teach. I don't need a script because I know my content. I don't, I know what slides they are, you know, so I know I can just put the topic of something that I'm teaching. So I know that, oh, after lunch, okay, I'm doing three types of marketing, jumpstart your marketing system, the marketing wheel, and the top 10 networking things. So, and so I know just by a glance, so this is what I keep on my little table. Now this is an, uh, you know, even in a virtual event, I have a table where I stand up and my camera's on me, but I have a table just like I would if I was in a live event and this yes. is top and front and center for me. So you're talking about, so at an, uh, at an in-person event, there would be a, a high top table where yep. you'd put your water and your notes yep. and a pen or whatever. Lip gloss, water, <laughs> lip gloss, water, and a pen and a pad of paper, maybe some sticky notes, my, maybe a couple books and that. <laughs> and, and you've got like your <laughs> yeah. one, one sheet at a glance that tells sheet, it's you like a one sheet agenda if i had a five page agenda i think i would go crazy it would be too much for me yeah right? oh I, so. I love to create a one page and then i also like to create like the the mega detailed one that you know like the the tech team or whomever the team has but i do love to always have that one sheet because like you mm -hmm. said then it just, and everybody does it different it helps right? you so, it helps ground you and kind of where I'm at. Mm -hmm. And guests love that too. They love to know where they're at and where they're going. But I want to go back to where you said the first 90 minutes is so important. And let's and share a little bit more about why. Well, that sets the stage for the whole event, meaning it sets the energy. It sets the expectations of what they're going to learn how they're gonna participate. It also sets the expectation for that they're in the right place, 
positioning you as the expert, telling a really good story, and also it positions your close or your offer. So you do lead, you do leave tips about your offer without going into anything in that first 90 minutes, in my opinion. That's how I was taught, that's how I usually do it, that's how most of my people, friends uh, and peers that make a lot of money do it, yeah. right? And in, in, in addition to those things, you also have to hit the limiting beliefs of your prospects in the room. In my case, the limiting beliefs to investing in the offer later are, I don't have any money. My husband doesn't let me invest in stuff. I don't believe in myself and I'm actually going to do it. And so I have to talk to those fears and those beliefs in that first 90 minutes. Oh, wow. That's so good. So it helps if you can wrap those things into a story or two during that time. I'm giving all the secrets today. Oh my God. <laughs> I've never talked about this much <laughs> at about events in a podcast, you guys. So this is gold. <laughs> it is gold. I'm feverishly taking notes here because you just gave us the structure for setting the, the entire event up for success and but more importantly, you've set up the first 90 minutes to be extremely engaging. Mm -hmm. And I thought you were going to, what I thought you were going to tell me when about that first 90 minutes was like, if I don't hook them, <laughs> they're, you know, they're, they're walking, but you gave us like all of the secrets to the hook. <laughs> and it's, it, it's, 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 we're on the exact same page. Like that 90 minutes, that's when people are going to show up and figure out like, is this for me or not for me? Right. And yeah. how engaged am I going to stay for the rest of the event? It yeah. happens in person too. I mean, it, it just, it determines how long their visit to the coffee shop is over the next break. Right. <laughs> right. And it also depends how long that session is depending on how long your event is. So a two and a half or three day event, yes. If you're doing a one day event, like nine to five, then it might be a 45 minute session in the beginning, right? Yep. Then then it's, so you cut it down a little bit depending on how long of an event you have. If you're talking one hour webinar, then you've got like 10 minutes <laughs> in the beginning, right? But it's still really, really important Yes. To save those, do, do those same things in that intro yeah. of any event. That's key. I just, I just recorded a podcast episode. I think it's coming out. It's going to come out before this one where I talk about just events and profitability and how there's, it, it's kind of like there's building blocks to the event and things that we bookend around the offer and just things that make it more profitable. And I love and I didn't, I didn't even talk about this, that first, you know, 10 to 90 minutes and how absolutely essential it is to setting up the, the room to be, you know, receptive to the offer when it comes. So I'm so glad we had this, this, this chat today. The, so then after that, you're talking about, you were talking about a fire hose and how some people just have this, this tendency to want to share all the things during the event because, I mean, it's just like a natural instinct. We've got people in the room and they're live with us. And so we want to tell them all the things so that they leave with all of the information. But actually, the, it's probably too much and we need to leverage the value of being in person together, that synchronous learning to, to do other activities. And tell me what you intersperse in between. Um, well, I'll do, you know, pair shares where they turn to your partner and you say this and they'll listen or whatever. So any kind of pair share you can do. Um, I do a fun thing because I'm all about helping people make money. So if it's in person, we do easy yes offers. Mm. So I let people make offers in the room and collect credit cards and cash and make money on the spot. So it's super fun. And some people are scared to death. You know, you're looking at a room of like 50 to 100 people 
and you have to stand up and give like a 30 second pitch like hey i help i can you know help people blankety blank and for today i'm only i'm doing a special it's for 20 bucks you can get da 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 and who wants it and then people raise their hand and then you run around and collect their money <laughs> like it's so fun and then you collect their contact information too because of course you need that in order to follow up so uh it's or someone will do like for today only it's one four hours for 20 bucks instead of four hours for 50 bucks for like say an accountant or a, sure. a virtual assistant or something so it's super so you're, fun. you're training so, people to kind of um rip the band-aid off and yes, get comfortable yeah. with the uncomfortableness of making it because they need to make offers and they need to do it more often oh. they can make money every day if they're on a zoom call they can say oh i have a 27 dollars thing on my website here's the link go get it it'll solve that problem that you're talking about what a gift right what it, it, it's called an that's easy, a yes, offer that's a fun and exercise it's, it is it's super fun yeah and uh so we do that um we do uh I mean, I do lots of Q and A. I do some laser coaching, meaning like, well, I don't know how I'm a financial advisor. How am I supposed to do, uh, you know, write a book or how am I supposed to do a training or an event or something like that? Okay. Well, what about this idea? What about that idea? What about this idea? And so I'm like, like big idea generator. I throw out all these ideas and like, you could charge this for that and charge this for that. And they're like, Oh, you know, and then they're like, well, how do I do that? And I'll go into the, how they do that. And so that kind of laser coaching is great. And if you're good at it, it shows everybody else in the room. Oh my God, she works fast. She's got some ideas. I can do that. I can mm -hmm. see, I need to talk to her about how my thing, right? So laser coaching is a good way to get people to experience how you really work with a client. I, I couldn't agree more. I think it's absolutely essential to place after the offer because it allows people to put themselves in the shoes of the person who's getting coached and imagine what it would be like if they signed up and started getting coaching and starting getting results. And it's, it's just perfection. <laughs> Yeah. And if you don't sell coaching, you sell something else, then you just have to give an example of that. Or, you know, in my course, I have an explanation for that. And it's this, this, and this. And I have an explanation for 27 of the things we're talking about today. And it's all in the course. So you just have to, you know, f figure out how to give that example for, mm -hmm. for, for you and what you sell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You talk about how you follow up after events in order to close more sales. And I wanted to get into that a little bit with you today because I think it's a kind of a, an untapped opportunity, if you will. Yes. So um, <laughs> there's so much to talk about follow-up. I mean, I, talk, I do a whole one day all about follow-up because it is literally the most important thing and so many people forget how to do it or they do one thing they'll add you to the list and then you might get an autoresponder and then maybe you're lucky if you see a couple of other email newsletters or promotions but they don't give a lot of thought into the full follow-up process now i've been in sales and marketing since i was 16 and i'm 52. oh my gosh okay so i know a lot about sales and marketing and i've been doing it in every job before i started my business yes. i was in advertising sales so 20 years in my business though when I come off an event, I have all these, well, if they haven't signed up at all for any, if they haven't bought, then usually I have all their contact information. Now I'm just showing you some follow-up forms from a free event that I did with an exhibitor booth. And so these are like little forms people fill out, yeah. right? And then I get their cards and then we take them back and enter them in and send them emails and all that. But when someone comes to an event that they register for, obviously you're gonna have them in the system already. If it's a paid event, you have their mailing address and their phone number, as well as their email. If it's a free event, I highly encourage you, especially if you're gonna be teaching something, to get the name, the email, and the address, and the phone number. Because you cannot rely on email only these days. You can't. Because no, the, you, 
90% of the time you send an email to someone for the first time that it's going to go into spam or trash. Yes. And so most people are not conditioned to look in spam or trash yet still on a daily basis to look for things they just signed up for. That's why you get people signing up for your free thing like three or four times because they're like, where's the email? Where's the email? And they didn't even look in their <laughs> spam or trash, right? <laughs> like, look at your spam or trash. So literally, <laughs> I send mail and we're just sending a mailing out right now. And I don't have, let's see. Yes, I have. So we send little cards out in the mail that they're pre-printed and they actually have a sign, um, a message in the middle that says, thanks for coming to the event. Um, I, or, or I have some that say, thanks for grabbing a free gift off my website, etc., and talks about what to do next. It also says, go look in your spam or trash folder because my emails are probably sitting in there white waiting for you nice. and you can sign up for a free call, right? Then... Let me just keep going because you have to do fun. How many times, when's the last time you actually called people, right? I don't necessarily call too much one by one anymore, although I did in the beginning. I called every single person myself by myself, you know, dialing for dollars yes. like, and dialing for follow up. I did it for years and years and years. But in the last few years, I found a site that will auto call now there's also a way to hook it up to your shopping cart if you have keep or some other systems and stuff like that you can it integrates with a thing that calls people when you get yeah. their phone number those i haven't found to work that consistently yet um those twilio and all that um but i love sly broadcast sly broadcast and this is i if anybody signs up for my stuff, you're going to get a call from me from Slack. It's really personal, though, because it says, hey, it's Katrina Sawa here. You just signed up for my free thing. I'm so excited to talk to you. Uh, please make sure you're looking at your spam or trash for my emails. <laughs> I mean, literally, I'm constantly reminding people to do that because the main mode of conversation or, you know, communication is email. But you have to tell people to go there. It's ridiculous, but it's true. It's so smart. So <laughs> your the follow up process begins with getting their name, email, and phone. So I'll I mean, be, I know it's well, common well, sense, but it's not always come in practice, right? We have no. to have their contact information, you and you're to. you're underlining and starring that we need to have not just their name, their email, but we need to have their phone because yeah. texting and calling is a thing. <laughs> Well, in text, you have to get text approval. So just because they sign up for your email and give you a phone number doesn't mean they're approving text messages. So that's a whole different campaign in itself that you have to get through text message software. In my opinion, I would do it that way. Don't just one-on-one -on -one text people. Oh my God, don't do that. Like, But you can send an email to people and say, hey, if you'd rather get text messages from me and little inspirational notes instead of my emails or in addition to my emails, then click here and enter your phone number and I'll start sending you texts. Yes. So you have to get that approval. But I would get the email first. And we're not talking about full contact information for your free download. Okay, your free download should still just be first name, last name, and email. Um, but if it's a bigger training or even for my webinars now, I do full contact information because I'm doing a lot of training and I'm giving a lot of value and I just deserve your full contact information, frankly. You know, if you want this, yeah, there's free stuff out there, go ahead. But if you want the right stuff, you can come to me and give me your full contact information. Yeah, and, and you know how to use it, <laughs> sounds like. So after an event, when you have their full contact information, that you're sending a physical piece, you're calling people, maybe you're even texting people. Um, what if what is that? What is that? I assume you have like an email s sequence with that's like a close down for the offer. Did I kind of get the? I think it's different for every event, but yes, I mean, I usually don't pre-write those because I like to, like I said, feel the energy mm. in the event. Kind of sometimes I tweak my offers, sometimes I'll not make an offer or do something different. And so um, I'm very much in the moment. So my follow up is usually done by me that next day or whatever. Um, and so I write specific emails that make sense for what just happened. So I'm very close to that follow up because I know it's a key thing, it's a key part. 
Mm-hmm. It's that important that you want your hands it's on it. That important. I don't outsource the follow up. Are you kidding me? No, that is my money. Like not just money, but that's getting clients. Yep. And that is not something to outsource. I don't care if you like sales and marketing or not. You better learn to like it. Oh, you have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not optional. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's a really good tip. There is to have felt the energy of the room and really make those follow-up emails match. Well, and I'll do videos what too, just happened. right? So tell me about that. Sometimes I'll do a video. I'll do a video after and I'm like, oh my God, it was so great to see you guys. I'll even do it the day of in that same outfit. Oh my God. And then I'll put that. So a lot of times you have a Facebook group, right? For your event people whether it's in person or online, especially at the online events these days, they usually have a Facebook event, I do, and that's where everybody goes to interact and where you can also drop things in there. So I could email them and say, hey, I just put a video in your Facebook group, go check it out. And then, um, and I can also Facebook it or put it in Facebook and then they'll get notifications. So they get in two ways to hear about that video. Right. And then I might also even make a phone call and say, hey, I just dropped a a video in the Facebook group. Go look at it. So there's three ways. Right. So good. So you're you're taking like one piece of follow up this video, for Mm -hmm. example, and you're letting people know Mm -hmm. about it in like three three different ways. They're getting it in their email. They're getting it in the community. They're getting it by phone. Yeah. You've not you forgotten about people. Them. You can even private message them if you really want to take it to the next step, right? Because not everybody sees their notifications. I don't. I don't see my notifications in Facebook because there's hundreds a day. I don't know who has time for that. I look for the green ones. <laughs> Comments, you know, like that's it. Yeah. That's all I have time for. Yeah, there's, it, it's a lot. Do you? It's like, it's like sending an email and it might go to spam or trash, relying on people to see their notifications. Are you kidding oh, yeah. me? Yeah. No. Like you can't rely on that at all. Facebook has decided to give us a notification about absolutely everything. I, I feel like it's a game of whack-a-mole right now that I'm playing, like to turn off <laughs> Facebook notifications because I'm I like a very specific like lens to which notifications I want. And I feel like just when I've like I've turned off it, what feels like a million of them, they've come up <laughs> with like, oh, but maybe you want to know about this or this. <laughs> Well, one trick is I turn them off on my phone or my email. So I don't get any Facebook notifications on phone or email. They're only inside Facebook. So the only way I can see the notifications is if I log in and I see what's up. And that keeps some boundary with your cell phone and your email inbox. Same. No. No insanity. No notifications uh, reach my person uh, by... Other than if I like log in and then they've got the list there and yes, I'm right. looking for the comments, right? Yeah, the green and, ones. That's why I say the green ones. And you've just mm-hmm. trained your brain on the color. I'm trying green. to like turn off the ones the no. next time I log in. I only see green, but. Only green. I know you can't. I've tried. <laughs> You're I've telling tried. me, Sarah, it's futile. <laughs> Stop. Just pay attention to the color. Yeah. Oh, so good. <laughs> so you're just, you've just told us like. <laughs> How many different, like seven different ways to follow up afterwards? This is epic. What can I, I want to ask you, I want to ask you something specific to your offer follow-up. So usually people make an offer at the event and then they have some sort of deadline, scarcity, urgency to sign up before the event even ends, right? But we're talking about all this follow-up afterwards. So obviously you're extending the window beyond the bounds of the event, right? To capture more people. Depends. How many, how many days do you typically stay in that? It depends. Uh, when I did live events um, and they were enrollment event, three-day event, and they did live events, I would typically not extend the window for the offer, at least not the discount or the bonuses. Yep. You gotta sign up today. And when you have an order form in person, I was just printing a new order yes. form for my event. Like when you have an order form in person, I mean, it's easier to sit down with someone. Let me just talk through it with you. Let me just make sure it's the right fit. And then you can sit down one-on-one on a break or after yep. the event. Like, is this gonna be good? Okay, you just need to fill this out. I just need to have it before you leave. You know, so no, I don't extend the offer um, if you leave and decide to do it later, you know, 
you're not going to get these bonuses or whatever. The only way that I would extend it is if, you know, if you have to talk to a significant other or something's up and we're going to schedule a follow-up call for the following week, I can let you have that special if you schedule now mm, that call. Something like so that. So good. Mm-hmm. Scheduling And call. then virtual events, you can, I, I have yet to find, honestly, I have yet to find the secret to getting them to buy today. (laughs) So they're not as profitable for me as the live events were. Really? They're still profitable, but I find I have to do lots of follow-up calls. Mm -hmm. Most people just want to talk about it. And the other problem is I have too many offers. Like, don't do that. Like, I have I have an, a high-end mastermind that is ideal for most people. I have one-on-one. I have a group program. I have a lot of online trainings. I mean, I have book options. I have speaker trainings. I mean, I have a lot of things because I've been doing this for so long. So usually when you have an event, you want one offer, yes. right? You might want to downsell after that big offer but um, if people are confused, especially on virtual, they're not buying. So the the main call to action really for me virtually is to schedule a call. And so I usually clear my schedule for a, a good portion of the fo- week following the event. because I wa- And then I only let them book those days. Like if you're interested in one of these, I will hold those specials open through next week. But you've got to book today. So here's my calendar. Here's my calendar. Here's my calendar. Right? That's so, that's so smart. The, the, but I probably need to make more. If you sign up during the thing, you'll get this extra bonus or something. I probably need to do that just so they buy. Yeah. <laughs> I've also seen it where, you know, there's a, a team of coaches in, in a zoom yes. and it's during the event and the, the opportunity to have that <clears throat> time to talk with a coach. Yes one-on-one does go away before the event ends. So that, that does help like make the, the urgency for. And there's pros and cons to that strategy, yeah. right? The pro is you can usually get more people to buy during the event. Um, the con is you either have to pay them commission, which is fine, um, and or pay those people to be there. And a con would be, are they really good? Like you have to get really good people yeah. to do that. So they're more of an investment. So you don't make as much, perhaps. The other con for the attendees is they get pulled out of the event. Yes. And I've been in events where people pull people out of the events before as a, an attendee, and it's horrible. It's a horrible feeling because you feel like you're missing something. Totally. So I would never do that at my events. No way. Um, I don't want somebody to miss something because every piece of content is designed specifically to get them somewhere. Mm-hmm. If you pull them out for a half an hour to do a strategy session, that means you're only focused on the sales and not the transformation for the people, in my opinion. And I don't agree with that for me. Yeah. So you would reserve any time if we did that scenario in a virtual event it would only be open during breaks during lunches after the event was over um, kind of like how an offer table would be available in an in-person right. event where it's just so virtually breaks yeah sometimes my events virtually are from nine to two or nine to three and so i will say hey if you want to talk after the event hang out for the next hour and we'll answer some questions or I can schedule private calls too, for sure. Yeah. And the days of doing an evening session are gone for me. I'm sorry. When I turned 40 something, I was like, (laughs) I can't even stay awake until nine or 10 o'clock. You want me to do an evening session just to wear down the people? Well, where's me down? I don't even know what I'm saying because I'm clueless at that time of night. My brain turns off at like five. So doing an evening session doesn't work for me anymore. I did it for a few years and it was sort of effective, but physically I can't do it anymore myself. So I no longer put my pre- put pressure on myself to do that kind of a, yes. an event. Three cheers <laughs> for boundaries. I, I do what you want. Yes. Well, I really, I mean, back to where we started this conversation today about bringing the energy to the room that you want your guests to emulate and mirror is you have to like take care of yourself and so you need to know what your boundaries are so that you're getting the, the rest and the the time to eat and you know drink water and exercise and all the things that keep you at your highest and best when you're delivering content yeah. 
Agreed. Food and sleep and even the right footwear now, right? So I've had two total hip replacement surgeries oh and God. I've had a foot surgery and I used to be like 60 pounds heavier than I am now. It was really hard to stand on my feet for three days, oh, yeah. right? Physically. Um, and even one event I had, was it, uh, I think I, it wasn't after surgery. I had twisted my ankle like super bad. And I literally did my event from a, like a um, recliner chair and an ottoman or a chair, a big koofy chair and an ottoman with a table next to me and my crutches. Like I literally, the show must go on. So it was like right before my, one of my events in person. It was a crazy, and I sold nothing at that event. I will just tell you that if you can't do it full energy, full out, or you're in any kind of lack of confidence mode for any reason, it's going to make a difference. Wow. That's a really good tip. That's a really good tip. Yeah. So what a learning, what a, what a helpful learning opportunity for you to go through that so that you could be able to share that with us. So we can just yeah. know, like, just reschedule. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> to know what do you say to yourself backstage and on stage <laughs> um what do I say you know one thing I I don't necessarily say stuff to myself I'm not like an affirmation you got this mm -hmm. I don't really do that kind of thing one thing I do do let's see if I have it handy I don't think I do oh yeah I do. is um Every day before my events, I will pull an angel card and I'm not usually the big woo woo person. I'm a practical tactical, but when I need to get in a certain energy or get my heart centered on who's going to be there and why they're here and what I need to deliver, I will draw an angel card and you never know what's going to come out. And it could be ground yourself, right? <laughs> and like, and then you're like, ah, oh, okay, take off my shoes. All right, get in my body, you know, that kind yes. of thing. Or I might, you know, I might get uh, cleanse and detoxify. Oh, okay, well, I need to eat a shake or something, yeah. or like I need to shake it off or dance or something like that. So, yeah. And I love music. So music gets me in the right energy. So I start events with music, except virtually. I haven't really, unless I bring in a, a separate techie team, it's really never an, uh, it's always a flop. Put it that way. When you put in, or when you put videos or music on yourself for your virtual event, you need a team for that. Yeah, I do. I do recommend a team <laughs> because yeah. it can be done and, and done really well and be super fun, but yeah, it's just one of those things. It's just helpful to have a team behind yeah. you. Agreed. What What's your best tip for filling your events? <laughs> oh, that is, I don't have the best tip for that. Actually, going to other events is the best way to fill your, your own mm. events, I would say. That's it. I still, I mean, on my enrollment events, the most I've ever gotten was like 75, 80 people, honestly, okay? And uh, and I've always had a goal. Let me just get to 100. Let me get to 100, right? On the virtual events, now, when I'm doing it myself, I still haven't gotten over that many people. But when I did a multi-speaker event or a summit or something like that, I've gotten up to 650 people. So, I mean, it's just, it. I think, ugh. It's exhausting. So when other people help you promote, uh, that can be yes. helpful. So definitely you have to engage joint venture partners, affiliates, friends, speakers, contributors, vendors, sponsors, whatever it is, because doing it on your own, unless you have tens of thousands of people on your list, it's going to be very challenging. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Those are great tips though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's the... What's your favorite moment at events that you host? Favorite moment of all time? They're just or like a specific moment, moment at every event where you're like, ah, oh, I love this part. Hmm. 
I don't usually get stumped. I'm trying. Well, in person, there's so many more favorite moments um, because you can really connect with people in person. So I love welcoming people into the room. I love uh, meeting them in the bar and having a glass of wine. Uh, you know, I don't go up to my room and hide like some people do. I'm in it to win it. I'm in it and talking to people because most of my, I mean, all, all of my clients are my friends. You know, I have one client who's been a a client for, I can't remember four or five years and I've known her since ninth grade. She's one of my best friends. Right. And she hired me to help her start her business because she knew she needed some help. So my friends are my clients. My clients are my friends. So it's that connection, I think, is my favorite yeah. thing in general. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I do think when when done, the marketing is done right, that, you know, like attracts like. And it, it that is the beauty of owning a business and that's a personal brand is that you are able to build your network of people that you love. Yeah. I mean, heck, some of my clients even come to my house. People in my mastermind, mm-hmm. they get to come to my house, mm-hmm. right? So what is the, you gotta like the best people. thing about <laughs> having events as an offering within your business? Um, I think um, especially the lower priced ones or the free ones are a great um, initial experience with you. So initial way for people to try you out yes. either free or to dip their toe in to see if they like trust and connect with you so i think it's a great way for that Mm -hmm. um it's also a great thing to hold events for a deeper dive like right the ones at my house are a deeper dive we're masterminding about deep stuff as well as business but personal stuff um i think i think it's good at all levels in your business i have free webinars i have free summits. I have free, I just had a free two day love yourself successful event that went with my book. And, and I have a $2,000 three day mastermind. And then I have a high end that's only included with the mastermind. And then I have a three day enrollment event. I mean, there's lots of different events. You just have to get creative and they're used for different things. And you have to know the strategy between which event is for what and why. Yeah. And what you're going to do at each and what you're going to sell from each or offer from each. Oh, I, I couldn't agree more. I love that. I love when people add events as part of their Ascension model and then are really clear on what the purpose of each event is in that like, Ascension plan. And I will tell you, please don't do it if you don't have a, if you can't muster up some kind of bigger yes. personality. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be all la like mm-hmm. me, like, but you have to hold the energy, but you have to be entertaining. You have to be entertaining too, or they're dropping off, right? You have to be entertaining, engaging, and you have to have good content. And if you aren't really confident about running it, please hire a team earlier on. I spent probably thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 to put my first live event on. Yeah with my team, trusting that I will make an offer and it'll all work itself out, yeah. right? And it did, granted, okay? But it's, you do not try to do it all yourself, especially in the beginning. That's when you need the most help. Yeah, yeah, and I would love people to get like out of the gate, feel confident. And I think you do feel confident when you're more, when you feel more supported. You totally do. You. Yeah. Katrina, what are you reading right now? I really don't read. I read my clients' books and I read my own book. So I always say joke because my Love Yourself Successful book is always with me, like on the plane. And if I'm going to read anything, it's going to be there. And so I'll just pull it out and I'll open a chapter and I'm like, ah, the perfect thing I need to know today. Because what you write is the stuff you always need reminders of too, usually is what I find. so beautiful. What a great idea. I I put that (laughs) another reason why I need to write a book someday yes yes uh, Katrina what do you what do you have going on right now that Lynchpin Nation should know about and where can they find you if they are wanting to be on any summits or gift giveaways I have lots of opportunities this year uh, and they can join my international speaker network um, and that is a great place to go for learning how to become a better speaker getting all your ducks in a row mm-hmm. also finding speaking gigs yeah. But we have opportunities to speak as well, um, if uh, you know, to get your feet wet, and uh, 
And then um, I have events throughout the year myself that people can attend. So you can go and get on the email list. There's lots of free stuff on the website to try me out. And, uh, and then just reach out. Don't be shy. And the platforms where uh, reaching out is a great idea are? Well, the website is the best way. If you sign up for something, I'll definitely get it. I read all my emails. I don't have Aww. someone reading my emails. Nice. Um, so jumpstartyourbiznow.com okay. is for that. Uh, and uh, But I'm on Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, I look at those messages. I don't really look at my messages on Instagram, on Twitter, although I'm all in all of those places. Yeah. I'm everywhere. But... Yeah. Well, I'll look up, I'll link up your, your website and your Facebook and LinkedIn in the show notes. So um, we know where cool. to find you. And this has been such a fun, very first conversation that we've ever gotten to have together. I'm so glad that we were introduced and I appreciate you giving us so much gold very generously today. You're welcome. Hopefully people will do something. Yes. Like do something like <laughs> Action makes teachers feel the best right? Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks Katrina for being here on Green Room Central today. Take care.